Well, ladies and gentlemen, it turns out that there is a new push for gun control in Texas, of all places. In fact, there have been a record number of anti-gun bills pre-filed in Texas ahead of January session, and if you were watching this channel's coverage of Virginia last winter, then it's starting to look a little familiar. Keep watching for the details and the deja vu. We have Bloomberg dumping a lot of money into yet another state, and we're seeing some bills being pre-filed that we also saw in Virginia last year. Among this push are bills to ban private sales, criminalize self-defense, raise the age to buy a gun, two, yes, two assault weapons bans, and even a bill to eliminate certain requirements for gun-free zone signs at the exact same time, coincidentally, <laughs> that Bloomberg happens to have filed a lawsuit arguing that these signage requirements for gun-free zones are a violation of the First Amendment. That lawsuit will be in a second video because in the end, I decided it deserved its own WTF moment. It's okay, I guess. Looking at these bills, I guess this really shouldn't surprise me as much as it does, seeing as Texas did create leftist darling Beto O'Rourke, and he got much more support than I would have thought. I'm hoping that it's just because this whole, whoa, I'm a cool skater bro thing appealed to sexually frustrated soccer moms, but I, I don't know, weirder things have happened. Before we take a look at the bills, this video is brought to you with the help of Blackout Coffee Company, and I am super excited to be partnering with them. They are so pro Second Amendment that they have an entire Second Amendment flavor line and a 1776 flavor line. Though personally, I'm pretty partial to their raspberry and French toast flavors myself. I love me a flavored medium roast coffee. Check them out and use my link down in the description, which is www.blackoutcoffee.com slash Liberty Doll to get some awesome coffee and help out the channel. So let's take a look at these bills. First up, HB 118, pre-filed by Representative Ortega. This bill seeks to ban private sales so that they can only be done through an FFL. Or if you're really closely related, which is weird. Here's the most important part of the text. Requirements for a private firearm transfer. A, a person may not sell or otherwise transfer a firearm to another person unless one, the person is a licensed firearms dealer or two, the person is not a licensed firearms dealer and A, the person sells or transfers the firearm to a licensed firearms dealer, a peace officer, a law enforcement agency, or a person licensed to carry a handgun, B, the transfer and the transferee are related within the second degree or the third degree as defined by the government, or C, before delivering the firearm to the person to whom the firearm is being sold or transferred, <laughs> the person selling or transferring the firearm requests that a licensed firearm dealer conduct a national instant criminal background check to verify that the person to whom the firearm is being sold or transferred may lawfully possess a firearm. Oh no, that's not necessary. So to be clear, if this bill passes, your options for a private sale in Texas will be one, be an FFL, two, if you're not an FFL, you're only allowed to sell to an FFL police officer or someone with a concealed carry license who also happens to be related to you because there's no or or and between statements A and B or three, still not be an FFL and still be required to have the sale go through an FFL so they can run a NYX check. Now it is entirely possible that that's some sort of mistake in the text, though that's not typically how politicians operate. It's also entirely possible that it is done on purpose, as laws are often written in a way that's confusing to lay people and maybe Ortega thinks that she's being sneaky and that it won't be caught. Admittedly, I didn't catch it the first time I read through the bill. 
Either way, as both the state, House, and Senate are under Republican control, the bill has little chance of getting anywhere. But there is one thing that I've learned over the past few years, especially after last year's fiasco in Virginia, and that is never say never. We also have another bill from Ortega, HB 127, which would make it illegal to open carry a rifle or even have someone else accidentally see your rifle unless you're walking on private property or walking to your car. Though don't worry, my LARPer friends, if you are an actor in a historical war reenactment, then you are A-OK. -okay. Bang! Bang! Pow! Pow! Hit with stick! Hit with stick! I can't imagine that there are a ton of folks just walking around open carrying their rifles into the grocery store or coffee shop, but what we have seen a lot of this year is protests with armed folks, whether they were protesting the new gun control bills in Virginia, the lockdowns in Michigan, or guarding businesses during the riots. So to me, this is probably aimed at protests. Can't have any of those First Amendment rights lying around here. Next are two red flag laws, HB 164 and 395. They are your standard red flag bills, except for a couple key components that I found to be a little interesting. First, the person filing the risk protection order can be a family member, attorney, cop, or any member of the person's household, which means they don't actually have to be related. Second, when filing, medical and mental health records have to be turned over to the courts. This one I have mixed feelings about. On the one hand, it suggests that they want proof that this person is, in fact, dangerous. One of the requirements is that this danger is born out of a serious mental illness. But Texas Code also defines serious mental illness as actual serious mental illnesses like schizophrenia or other psychotic disorders, but also as depression and obsessive compulsive disorder. While some people can have very serious cases of depression and OCD, I would not generally consider them seriously mentally ill. And remember, I'm a therapist. So what we're seeing is that Texas, like all the other states, is casting a very, very wide net. Not to mention the very nature of having to hand over medical and mental health records is a HIPAA violation. You don't even have to hand those things over for an inpatient hold because that is privileged information. Typically, the only way that full records get out is if there's a subpoena because therapists write notes in shorthand and with clinical jargon and abbreviations that your average random person and average random court clerk or magistrate is just not going to understand. And once those records are out, they are out. There is no turning back. You have opened the floodgates. The bill says that the courts would then have to strike all of that information from their record, but I don't trust that. I have definitely seen people's records get used against them. And of course, it says right in the bill that if the order is granted, it will be granted without a hearing and without any actual notice to the gun owner which seems like a really good way to get shot when the cops just show up, take your guns and license, and then the courts have 14 days to actually tell you what happened and why they're taking your guns. Then, at the hearing, if the court finds the order justified, it will automatically continue for one whole year, and the courts can order you into mandatory mental health treatment. Once all is said and done, and once the order expires, it's the Department of Public Safety that keeps track of it for some reason. They would have 30 days to tell the courts it expired, and then the courts have 30 days to tell the cops, and then the cops have their own 30 days to check and see if the person can legally own a gun via the background check system. And then, after three months, they will send you a letter that you can come get your stuff back, but only if you submit a written request. 
But because Ortega really cares about you, her bill makes it so that if they decide that you can't get your guns back and then they turn around and sell them, they'll give you some of the money after they take out a bunch of fees, which probably leaves you like 20 bucks because you know they are not getting market value. Oh good, that makes me feel so much better. House Bills 172 and 241 are super fun ones, the latter filed by Ortega, and are basically copies of the 1994 assault weapons ban, banning rifles with any of six evil features, semi-auto shotguns, pistols or rifles with fixed mags of over 10 rounds, various gun parts, and, well, you know what? If you want to know what it bans, pretty much word for word, then all you need to do is go and look at the assault weapons bans that were filed in Virginia last year. Weird, isn't it? But there's more! Bills HB 178 and 234 both ban magazines of over 10 rounds. HB 201 would repeal Texas's campus carry law. And HB 231 was also pre-filed by Ortega it would make it illegal for anyone under the age of 21 to own an assault weapon, even though she's trying to ban them altogether anyway, because government loves redundancy. The only exception would be for cops and the military. We also have HB 236, which in and of itself isn't the most important of these bills by any stretch, except that it's been filed while there's also an every town lawsuit on the docket that argues that the signage requirements for gun-free zones are a violation of free speech. <sighs> Texas has certain requirements for its gun-free zone signage, as many states do. This bill would eliminate some of the requirements for those signs, making it easier for businesses to ban license to carry holders. And honestly, it's already pretty easy. The current required language is available online, and really the only other requirements are that the sign use contrasting colors and the letters be an inch big. And of course, that the sign has to be easily visible by the public. This bill would instead basically allow the sign to fly as long as it's legible and make the government provide a printable version that anyone can download off the website and then just tack onto a wall. I mean, yes, private property rights and all that, but the Democrats are basically handing them out like candy with a very encouraging, take this, it's dangerous to go alone. Representative Terry Meza, who is on several of these bills, also filed HB 196. This is a doozy and seeks to repeal parts of Castle Doctrine. This bill would still allow people to use deadly force to defend themselves against murder, kidnapping, or sexual assault, but would make it illegal to use deadly force in cases of robbery and aggravated robbery. Now, in Texas, aggravated robbery means the perp has a gun or other deadly weapon and or roughs you around a bit. The bill also requires that this happens in your own home as opposed to the current version, which only asserts that you have to have a right to be wherever you are if and when the deadly force is used. But here is the best part. You are only allowed to use deadly force if you are unable to safely retreat under this bill. That's right, if this bill passes and someone breaks into your house, you have a duty to try and retreat first, and then you have to let them beat you up, wave a gun in your face, and take your stuff. No, I, I think emphatically not. When Mesa made a public comment about her new bill, she said, I'm not condoning stealing, it's against the law, but it's not an offense that is punishable by death. Do you remember where we heard that before? Ah, yes, I believe it was during the months and months of riots and looting. And of course, just to be sure that it's more difficult to protect yourself in your own home, Mesa also filed HB 185, which would require your guns to be locked up at all times or else face a Class B misdemeanor, which can be stacked onto other charges. You see, it's for the children and the criminals. 
These bills are just the highlights, or lowlights, I guess, as they are downright awful. And I know there's probably more than a few people watching this and saying, oh, it'll never happen in Texas. But remember, there were a lot of folks that said it would never happen in Virginia, and, well, it did. It'll certainly be interesting to see where these bills go, how much support they drum up, and if we're going to see any Virginia-style pushback that I guess will be illegal under those bills. That's it for today, folks. Please like and share this video. Consider subscribing if you're new here and go ring that notification bell so you get about a 50-50 chance that YouTube will tell you about the video instead of just maybe like a 10 to 20% chance. <laughs> and go give Blackout Coffee a look to help support me and a pro-gun coffee company. Seriously, you guys, their flavors look awesome. If you'd like to help support the channel in other ways, you can check out my Patreon, Subscribestar, or give a one-time donation through PayPal or crypto. Until next time, thanks for watching, stay safe, and happy shooting.